wise man said, there is no such thing as a self-made man. And I think we can say the same for Axis. The story of Axis is incomplete without you, our cherished clients. We are because you are... Ten years ago, you made a choice. Axis owes you a debt of gratitude for your loyalty, for your commitment, for your support, and for all the trust you have reposed in our brand over the years. As we celebrate this great milestone, we say a very big thank you to all of you for believing in Axis. Thank you very much for believing in the Axis brand and also for keeping faith with us. I'd like to thank all our clients and to our institutional and individual clients and customers who would like to say we value your trust and confidence in us. We really appreciate you. Because of you, we've been able to deliver financial peace of mind to over 250,000 Ghanaians. I believe the next decade holds greater promise for you. As we have entered into a new phase of our life, it is our prayer that you, our cherished client, and exist, we shall grow and flourish together. There are better days ahead, and we will want you to be part of the Axis story. When we have chalked greater success, your name shall be inscribed in the very books of this dear company. We assure you that in the next 10 years, we will continue to provide the top-notch services um, that you have been used to and even improve upon that. As a pioneer in the pension industry, we shall continue to innovate and give you the best of service you deserve. We will continue to serve you better. Thank you for sticking with us all this time when nobody believed in us. We wouldn't have come this far without your support, feedback and encouragement. We recognize the trust you have reposed in us and we endeavor not to let you down. Thank you for listening to us when nobody believed in our message. Thank you very much for supporting the dream. Thank you very much for being with our suspension. We thank you for choosing us. So on behalf of our shareholders, our staff, our directors and our trustees, we say thank you for doing business with Axis. As the chairman of Axis, I would like to express our gratitude to all our dear customers, very precious customers, and faithful and loyal customers who have stood with this business and stuck with us for all these years. Thank you. 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 Thank you once again. And thank you for doing business with Axis. Merci beaucoup. Thank you so much for keeping us in business. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, good morning. It's a pleasure to welcome you to this webinar. We're very happy that you decided to spend your time with us. We'd like to start with a prayer. Um, please, wherever you are, as much as possible, kindly let's close our eyes as we take um, a prayer before we start the event. Our Lord and our Master Jesus, we'd like to say a big thank you this morning for the gift of life, for the gift of strength. We give you all the glory for what you have done for us and with us. We commit this meeting into your hands. We know that any event that has you as a captain and successfully, and by that we are committing this program into your hands, we ask that you strengthen us, give wisdom to every speaker and help them elaborate things so that we can understand. And we, the audience too, we commit ourselves into your hands that you give us understanding that in times like this, we can be sure and affirmative that trusting you will always bring us all the goodness that we uh, we thank you and give you the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. 
On that note, I'd like to welcome you to this very, very important webinar. Um, as we shared with you, the, the topic is the Government Debt Exchange Program and its impacts on pension funds. And this webinar is coming your way, Kind Ketty Access Pension Trust. Uh, we have a host of activities. And we also have very, very key people in the industry, people are, who are well-versed, that will be taking us through the various topics. We'll be hearing from um, people like Mr. Mani, who is the CFO of Access Pension Trust, Nanaria Feboama. Um, he's also the Chief Investment Officer of Access Pension Trust. We'll also be hearing from Mr. George Alote, the Chief Investment Officer of Stambic Investment Management Services. we we'll hear from a couple of other people as well. I'll be introducing them as their program progress. But before we start, we'd like to invite the Chief Finance Officer of Access Pension Trust in the person of Mr. Matthew Mani to give us an introductory remark. So Mr. Mani, please, if you are ready, we are ready for you. Great. Uh, thank you, Isaac Opari. So, Good morning to you, our cherished clients, invited speakers, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the board, management, and staff of Access Pension Trust, I wish to welcome you to our webinar on Ghana's debt exchange program and its impact on Access's sponsored schemes. From a relatively stable economy, Ghana has degenerated rapidly into crisis within a space of less than one year. As a result of Ghana's precarious debt position, international credit ratings um, Sorry, gentlemen, I got an interruption to show my video. All right. As it confirmed, if I'm good to go. Yes, please, sir. We can see you and we can also hear you. Right, thank you. As I was saying, uh, international rating agency, Moody's and Fitch, um, starting from somewhere September, October last year and intensifying this year, they have systematically downgraded Ghana's long-term issuer debt status to junk status. And that set off a series of subsequent negative market reactions. The downgrade specifically led to significant increases in yields on both CD denominated government bonds and also the euro bonds, effectively shutting the country from the international bond market. For instance, interest rates, which began the year at 12% for the 91 day treasury bill, now stand at about 35.54%. A three year government bond that was somewhere last year around 18, 19%. Today, we are quoting yields upwards from 60 to 70%. These are very significant increases with significant impl implications for the prices of those bonds. Consequently, the Ghana city came under immense pressure as offshore invested exited positions in domestic securities. The Ghana city also shaved off 54% and 48% for its value against US dollar and British pound respectively. The Ghana city has been ranked as one of the worst performing currencies this year. As a result of all the above, inflation increased from 12.6% as of December 2021 to 40.4% as of October. We are waiting for the figures for November to be published. All this happened because Ghana's debts are unsustainably high. The government has since July this year begun engaging the IMF to seek support. As a prerequisite for government and IMF to reach a staff level agreement, which I saw some notification this morning that they have reached, government might demonstrate its commitment to reduce its debts within the medium to long term. This could have taken the form as below. One, extension of maturities, 
It can also two, take the form of a reduction of interest or coupon rates. Three, it will also take a reduction in principal or a combination of all the three in one form or the other. This is what most people have referred to as haircut and has become a part of our daily vocabulary. I remember doing so in 2014-15, entering international vocabulary um, as power on and off. The vocabulary now are haircuts and defaults. On Monday, 5th December, government through the finance ministry announced a debt exchange program for local currency bondholders as part of government efforts to reduce its debt burden. The details of the program included maturity extensions and reduction in interest rates on local currency bonds held by institutional investors like your pension funds. While we are opposed to the proposal from government, we believe as fiduciaries, we have the responsibility to explain what this will mean to you, the ultimate beneficiaries of the pension schemes you manage. Our pension schemes on average hold about 70 to 80% by according to the NPRS regulations. As the regulations, the presentations unfold, you will be made aware the actual holdings your access pension schemes hold. But I can tell you they are far lower than what I've just mentioned. Now with the announcement from the finance minister, we as trustees have a responsibility to take decisions to safeguard scheme members funds as well as ensure the sustainability of the pension schemes we manage. For this reason, this webinar has been designed to provide adequate information on what's happening, the steps that your beloved trustee, Access Pension Trust is taking to ensure your pension monies are secure. We have a mission to ensure you retire with peace of mind. This is a principle we live by as we partner you on your journey to retirement. Our seasoned speakers assembled from the investment industry will provide you with insights into where we are as a country and an economy, the performance of your schemes, and what access is doing to ensure your money is secure. We will try as much as possible to reduce the financial jargons to ensure you fully understand the issues at hand, and most importantly, try as much as possible to answer all your questions that have plagued you over the last weeks. We are hopeful your time on this call will be worth it. I am encouraged by the number of participants we are seeing on the meeting so far, and this shows it's a very important topic. I trust that the speakers will do justice to their work. So on this note, I wish to officially open the webinar and wish you a fruitful engagement. We at Axis remain your reliable partner in pensions. All the best in your discussions. God bless our homeland Ghana and make our nation great and strong. Thank you all. Thank you very much, Mr. Mani, for that um, powerful introduction. Um, if you're just joining us, um, this webinar is coming your way, Kind Ketsi Access Pension Trust. And um, the main topic is the government debt exchange program and its impacts on pension funds. We'll be delving into other thematic areas like the performance of the Access Pension Scheme. We'll also look at the debt exchange program itself and its implication, and then also the impact it's gonna have on access spent and sponsored schemes. Um, so to kickstart, we'd like to invite Mr. Nanari Afe Boama, who is the Chief Investment Officer here at Access Pension Trust to start with us on the topic, the performance of the access sponsored schemes. Nana, please, if you can hear me, we're happy to have you. I think I can hear you. Yeah. I, 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 I need to share my screen. Who's disabled person? Right. So, good morning to everyone. And we are grateful for taking time to join our call today. So, I've been tasked of. of 
I've been given the task of walking you through the asset position of your scheme, your scheme's performance for 2022 till date, and present the strategy as well as outlook going forward. Before we go into the presentation, I'd like to make an important disclosure. Through our industry association, the Chamber of Corporate Trustees, we have rejected the bond exchange proposal by the government in its current form. We are currently engaging government on a better proposal that will benefit our scheme members, and we hope we succeed. For the purposes of this presentation, however, we assume that the debt exchange proposal will hold and plan accordingly with the proposal that was announced by the minister. Our fund managers will speak to the proposal shortly after my presentation. I show on this slide the portfolio structure of your scheme, specifically the Cedar Provident Fund. The Cedar Provident Fund is managed by four fund managers, Data Bank, IC Asset Managers, Stambeck Investment Management, and Carl Asset. We also have Blackstar Advisors on the Access Pension Plan. The fund compared with similar pension funds is much more diversified across the prescribed MPRA asset class. We do have only 29.1% in CD bond, which is currently the subject of the debt exchange program. We have about 37.3% in GH Euro bonds, about 10% in listed equities, 11% in quasi-government related debt, also in the mix of securities being restructured. And the 1.3 in mutual fund, 1.4 allocated to local PE funds. In anticipation of the potential debt restructuring, we sold almost all of our upcoming 2023 maturities in early November in order to be ready for any potential liquidity need of the scheme. Hence, our 8% allocation to cash and treasury bills. We wrote to you in a memo in July that we had embarked on the sales of 25% of our long-term CD bonds to pursue some strategies and that you were going to see some losses on your balances as a result. Our huge exposure to the euro bond is a result of that sale. The sale of those bonds also leaves us a little bit insulated from the local debt exchange than our peers. We want to thank you for your patience through that exercise and also to our fund managers for the quick execution of the strategy. The last do not chart is the currency exposure of our fund. Our USD exposure as of the end of November is about 42% of the total net asset value of the fund. And this 42% is made up of the 37% holding in Euro bond and about 5% holding in the APSA new gold ETF. The new gold ETF is priced in CDs but has an indirect exposure to USD and hence its addition. I am stressing on the currency exposure because as you will come to see shortly, this heavy USD exposure will contribute to some portfolio risk, i.e. swings between gains and losses in the near term. The portfolio structure is similar across the CEDA pension and the access pension plan, except that for the access pension plan, we have much more allocations to USD, thanks to the quick turnaround of our fund managers, Blackstar Advisory. So I would pause for 20 seconds for you to digest the portfolio yourself without talking through them.
All right, so this is the portfolio for the access pension plan. All right, now I would walk through the performance of the scheme. Starting off with the CEDA pension fund, the CEDA problem fund. The CEDA problem fund has done an average return of 36.9% from January to date across all the constituent funds. And this compares with average inflation of 27.3%. The CEDA pension is up by 40.5% against our average inflation of 27.3%. The access pension plan is up by 46.6%. Again, faring better than average inflation of 27.3%. The major drivers of this return has been our Euro bond holdings, as well as our GLD, which has seen revaluation return due to the GHS depreciation throughout the year. I know there are quite a lot of us who check our balances daily, which in my humble opinion is unhealthy for a long-term investor and may have seen decreased return over the last few weeks. The reason is mainly because of the strengthening of the city, which in effect is contributing to the slight revaluation losses. On the whole, however, despite those losses, your return on a year-to-date basis is in excess of average inflation. I would like to categorically state that the recent reduction you may have seen in your balance is not a sign that your money is being mismanaged or absconded with. Neither is it due to the bond exchange announcement. The losses mainly stems from the CD appreciation against the dollar, which is good for us all as Ghanaians, right? And the fact that we have averaged, we have an average of 48% for a scheme that's supposed to USD means you would see some volatility if the city strengthened. Safeguarding your fund is our core mandate so you can retire in peace. Now on our next slide, what does the future hold for us? Our strategy going into 2023 will be to continue to diversify our assets away from government risk. We have the tools, the platforms, and the products to do that. We wrote to MPRA in anticipation of the challenges we are facing to allow room to increase our external investment to 20% of our NAV. Our request, however, was not granted, but then we will keep pushing for that increase in external investment allocation to be able to achieve a better diversification of your fund we'll find opportunities in local equities. I mean, for instance, we have an opportunity to increase local participation in MTN. And the challenges with the government debt market makes that opportunity timely. Lastly, we would manage our liquidity to ensure we are able to pay out client withdrawal that are due without significant market loss. On investment outlook, we honestly do expect returns on local government papers to collapse. We may see, we may still earn some returns on our euro bond, subject to the outcome of debt negotiation on that front. We took an earlier bet this year that the debt restructuring was inevitable and therefore decided that when we get there, we'd like to be in a company of foreign investors who hold much of our bonds and have the resources to negotiate better terms than the local investors and hence our aggressive exposure to euro bonds. We do expect a repricing of bank fees deposit lower. If our investment industry does not maintain their tone deaf attitude towards equity markets, we may see money which would have gone to government chasing few good stocks on the Ghana Stock Exchange. And if that happens, our equity market may perform better. Combining the return outlook on this asset, Coupled with dim global and local growth forecast in 2023, I believe we are in for a general low return in 2023. However, I do believe 
that average real return and real return over here is return minus inflation may be higher than what we've seen this year. In conclusion, next year will present new challenges. But so is our resolves together with our fund managers to find opportunities to grow your money and give you a better retirement outcome. Since Act 766 was conceived, Ghana has gone through crisis after crisis. 2007 to 2008 saw the onslaught of the great financial crisis and the global oil price shock that saw oil price above $150 and pushed up price levels in Ghana to an unprecedented level. In 2012, 2013, we had a currency shock that led to a huge fall in the value of the city. Between 2014 and 2015, we had the energy sector crisis dealing a big blow to businesses and economic growth, leading to our 16th run to the IMF. Then came 2018 through to 2019, where an overly expensive financial sector cleanup led to investors losing money and general confidence in our industry falling to an all-time low. From 2020 to date, we've been dealing with COVID, Ukraine war, and unrighteous government borrowing leading to the country teetering on the earth of bankruptcy. Throughout all this time, you've entrusted your hard earned money to us, and I believe we've done good by you. Yeah. And you are here in this morning, Paul, because you chose to save. If you have chosen to consume all your earnings through this difficult last decade, in this difficult time we are in, where cost of living is outstripping our earnings, where or what would your fallback be? To quote Warren Buffett, in the short run, the market is a voting machine, but in the long run, it's a weighing machine. I think the potential IMF deal may lead to a soft landing for the country and improve our macro fundamentals. And people who are invested for the long term will be the ultimate beneficiaries. Thank you very much for listening. Okari, please, over to you. Thank you very much, Nana, for that insightful presentation. Um, if you have just joined us, we'd like to uh, remind you that this this webinar is coming your way, Kind Ketsi Access Pension Trust. Um, if you have a question, or kindly ask that you put them in the Q and A box. Um, the participants will address. Sorry, the we will address them in due course. Now. That Sorry, you are muted, please. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, um, sorry about that. Please, if you're now joining us, we'd like to remind you that this webinar is coming your way by Kind Get of Access Pension Trust. If you have a question, kindly put it in the Q&A or the chat box and it will be addressed in due time. And we would like to continue on the presentation. And the next topic is the debt exchange program and its implications. So to start that, we'd like to invite Mr. George Alote, who is the Chief Investment Officer of Stambic Investments Management Services. George, if you can hear me, please take the floor. Thank you. Thank you, Isaac, and good morning. Isaac, if you can also help me confirm whether I'm audible. Yes, please. We can hear you and we can also see you. Great. Um, so I wouldn't um, bore you with why we are where we are. I mean, obviously, we all know we're in crisis. And certainly there needs to be some treatment. If you're in crisis, you need to treat it. And the approach that the government is sharing now is on a debt treatment. But then one thing is also very clear that Certainly, the debt destruction is not enough to bring us out of our crisis. Certainly, there's the need to tighten our bills on the fiscal side, and there's the need to take some wise political choices there for us to be able to rein in all the unnecessary expenditure in court to, to, for us to be able to come back to where we want to be. 
I know the next presentation will touch on, the Marcus will touch on the various uh, options of what the government wants to do. So I wouldn't spend a lot of time on it, but then I'll just touch on probably some of the impacts, impact on the scheme, broader economy, and maybe and, 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 and the need to as well. So I've, I've, I've looked up about two or three each in terms of negatives and also positives as well. Obviously, um, based on the scenarios that we've run so far, if you're looking at it on a cash basis, plus raw cash basis, um, what the government is offering is giving us more cash. But then that, if you look at it from that angle only, you will also be giving yourself a service because you are not factoring in the opportunity cost. Broadly, a lot of our holdings, largely in the market, is within the five-year handle. I mean, considering the fact that the market is about 85% of our holdings will be touched based on what the government have announced. If that is the case, then opportunity cost will be key. Because if we have a lot in mature in the next five years and they are extending it to about another 10 more years, certainly you are not going to get enough cash flow where normally you would have used to reinvest for you to enhance your return. So that is one of the key negatives that unfortunately we are we are faced with. Then for me, the next one probably it's on the fact that our credit rates do stand a risk of being fragile. I'm saying this because there's a likelihood that even though the government have shared or have invited members to come to the exchange, we don't expect everybody to be part of it, for everybody to sign up. I mean, Access has mentioned their position through the Chamber of Trustees. Even outside that, the, the, there are some also some independent companies who will not also who may also not be willing to exchange. The, the comms that we've seen across also on the FAQs, it seems to sound as if there's a lot more priority to be put on those who are under the program. If that's the case, then certainly there's that cloud of uncertainty whether indeed government will honor the other obligations. Should that be the case, then that uncertainty I speak of on the on our credit rating, which is very important for us going forward, maybe not in the next three years or so, but in the near term will be very, very important. Because if there's a focus, then people will think that, okay, if they're not able to pay us or will not be able to pay those who do not join me from the program, what does it mean? Unfortunately, unlike this year where we don't, or we are unlikely to have any guarantees from the from the World Bank. This time we are on our own. So unfortunately, we may not see that. Should that be the case, then certainly we need to brace ourselves for some fragilities in the rating. We may see um, a recovery once these things come to pass with our ratings moving to a positive outlook. Um, still may be in the, in the junk status from the beginning, but that's something that we need to look at as well. Should that be the case, then certainly um, it will take a bit of time for us to recover. So those are my two key points in terms of negatives. In terms of real cash flow, even though it looks better, but in terms of opportunity cost, we may be losing out. Then my third point on the negatives has to do with the fact that pensioners who are within the five, who who, who be going on pensions in the next five or 10 years, unfortunately will have to invest a bit more on their private money. On the fact that even just this year, we are seeing a negative return of what, a little over 20%. Considering the fact that next year, even though we may see inflation taper somewhere from the second quarter, based on even on the on the base effect, certainly if the government is not paying any um, return, assuming we are going to haul for this exchange, that certainly has an impact on how much you are going to make in terms of returns. So in the next two years, uh, from this year and next year, we may actually see a negative return of about 30% or more. Should that be the case, investors or pensioners who will be retiring in the next five years or so will need to be able to top up, need to be able to add um, a bit more money 
in terms of investment money, should they wish to enjoy all the, 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 the planned retirement that um, they, they have in mind. And I'm sure the team from Access will be able to, be able to share a bit more, a bit more color on the scenarios. And I think the last negative for, for us on our side is on the fact that there's a likelihood of the, um, the government also roping in other non-tradable securities. Unfortunately, um, even though the initial focus is on the local debt, we expect that they will add in the proposals which they have actually factored it in on the FAQs that has been coming out. Does that have any impact on a typical or annual um, annual syndication loans that typically comes in the fourth quarter? That could be. Uh, so that's one angle that to also look at. So I've highlighted four, four negatives that in my view or in our view from our side, what this means for us as economy, what this also means for us as, as, as pension fund managers, and of course our, our value clients like yourself. I didn't mention time value of money, which will be losing, which means that effective returns will be lower. We did speak about the credit, um, credit on the credit ratings as a country. Then the need for pensioners, there's a likely impact of other securities being added on. In all of these, um, there's still some positives, um, which I know Access has already taken the lead in terms of um, what to do the presentation that Anna mentioned, and also what I'm actually privy to in terms of what they, they have been indicating or what they have been investing or looking at to invest our uh, money in. That has to be with diversification. I mean, certainly as asset owners and managers, I think we've been quite slow in playing or making pension plans relevant as it's supposed to be done. This we can find in Scandinavia, in the Asia, and even in South Africa as well, where pension funds are integral to the growth of the economy. In this case, uh, at least even though we are late, there's something actually pushing us to get in there much faster. But the downside is that because we haven't prepared ourselves enough broadly on the market, they are likely supposed to be, we may experience a few, a few bends along the line because people broadly don't understand that market and that typically in the initial stages, you may have some challenges in the volatilities. And like Nana mentioned, as a pension um, account, you, you should not be too worried if you see volatilities in the near term, certainly if you, if you have um, a better, I mean, medium to long-term objective, we believe that a lot of these will find themselves or will, will iron out. The second positive that I also see is that as even as asset managers or any professionals on your fund, there's a need for us to go to the basics. I think we've, we've relied too much on the guarantees um, that the government is going, has guaranteed this paper, has guaranteed this bond. Typically because of that, um, we are not it moves us a lot easier to fall for any opportunity that comes to the market. We should not be. Even though we understand that it's important to have collateral, but then the cash flow should be important. So as asset managers as well, it's a good learning that we, we have to move in for to be able to um, churn out the sustainable returns that our beneficiaries or our clients are looking out for. Then for me again, the last, probably the most important about what, what it means for us as for the positivity is about the fact that we may see interest rates decline in the near term. I think for the first time in about what 10 or so auctions last Friday, at least we saw the 91 day and 182 day bills drop because that because government has ring fence that side where they will be using it more for working capital, if I mean, if it was a company, and also to, for, for, for individual holders who would typically be investing in T-bill. We've seen a high demand in that space. Typically, once your demand is high, the government, and based on the need for government, 
they will be able to pick lower sizes, then which will naturally drive prices down as well. We may see some similar sentiments also based on the fact that bonds being issued to us are at lower yields, meaning that um, anybody playing within that space will also see lower yields. But then broadly for the economy, it, it bodes well for us because we need these lo lower yields for the main market to be able to borrow, for us to be able to sustain the economy. So um, in a nutshell, um, we know that there's a lot of conversation ongoing, but uh, we as, 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 as fund managers, we know that, and the government also is aware that the current offer that they are sharing or that they have shared is certainly not enough. And we expect them to come back with a revised position based on the conversations that we've been having or holding with them. So we expect that sometime in the week, they should be able to announce better terms for all of us to be able to, 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 to be able to um, jump on to this exchange if it's, if it's supposed to be successful. And we also believe that as pension assets, it's important that if the terms are renewed and look favorable, we need to be able to think about how we will also make this a success. Considering the fact that the government has about 137 billion out there to exchange and pension funds hold close to about 20 to 25% of those assets. So the success of pension funds participation certainly is key, but I know that through through your chamber or the ISIS's chamber, there's a lot of work ongoing in that space. So I think these are a few thoughts that from our side at Stanbic, um, we have around what negatives and positives would be, and we hope that we'll be able to provide a bit more color. Should there be any follow-ups and more than up to this one? Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, John. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, the whole team is grateful for that. Uh, so on the same topic, we'd like to hear from the Chief Investments Officer of the um, IC Asset Managers in the person of Mr. Isaac Boama. Um, Isaac, if you if you can, yeah, we can see your screen. I'm uh, sorry, your video. So please, you can take it from there. Hi. Good morning, and thanks for having me. Um, George, thanks for doing a lot of my work for me. Thank you so much. Um, following from what George said earlier on, I'm just going to summarize my thoughts with four main questions. Um, the first one being, how much is Ghana saving from this debt operation? Because essentially what government is doing is to make some savings to bring down the pressure on our fiscal. So exactly how much are we saving from this debt operation? My second question then will be, are these savings enough? And the third question will be, what is the impact on the pensions? And I guess the last question will be, can pension funds be hopeful for the future? Because pension funds are future or forward looking. So help me start with the first question, which is how much is Ghana saving from the debt operation? So from our little calculation, if you look at the present value of the existing debt that government wants to swap versus the present value of the proposed debt, government could potentially make a, pre, a, a savings of about 29 billion in present value terms, which amounts to about 5.63 of GDP. If you peg our GDP at 500 million Ghana cities. Um, quite clearly, 5.63 in present value terms is not enough, which suggests that there could be potential treatment for external debt like Nana, we have said earlier on, and other government obligation in addition to fiscal consolidation. So, Let's all be mindful that this domestic debt exchange is not the end of the entire recalibration of the Ghanaian economy. We need to do a bit more for us to make significant savings, even though I would say the 5.63 is meaningful. Um, my third question is, what's the impact on pension funds? And here, George has said quite a bit of it. I'll just pick on two. The first is that if you look at private pension funds, it's grown quite well almost about 25 there about percent in terms of year on year growth. Most of this growth was on the back of high interest rates on bonds. Now with government restructuring the bonds, growth quite clearly will slow down for private pension funds. Um, if you look at the coupons that would have been paid next year, private pension funds could potentially lose up to like 8 billion next year in terms of the coupons that they would have earned 
So quite clearly, growth will slow down for private pension funds next year. Um, there I say, if inflation goes according to plan per the Bank of Ghana numbers where they projected a year end inflation of 25%, we could have a negative real return for pension funds unless, again, the dollar goes high and then people decide to buy dollar and that creates return. But other than that, we could have a negative real return next year. I think we should all be upfront about it. Now, the second point that I'll leave is what's the immediate impact? And this, I believe, highlights pension funds treatment of financial securities. And you are referring to the accounting treatment of Ghanaian bonds. Most of these bonds were bought at steep discounts and pension funds largely amortize this discount over the life of the bond. By government changing this, by, by through the government debt operation, what's going to happen that on day zero, assuming this goes to plan, in our own estimation, the nominal value of pension funds could go up to five, 15%. Because what's going to happen is that government is bringing the discount that you're amortizing over a lifespan of the bond to today. So you could potentially see a 15% markup on your nominal value. However, if you're using market value numbers, today's bonds that as we have is probably selling at 60 pesos to one CD. The market value of the ones that we propose will sell less than that. I wouldn't want to go into the actual market value of this because again, once you move into that space, you're moving to the area of assumptions and assumptions could either go for you or against you. But let me just state here that the nominal value of pension funds are not expected to go down. At worst case now, they could go up um, just upon the exchange of the program because of government bringing the discounts forward. The last question is, can pension funds be hopeful? Um, my simple answer is yes. Um, like Nana Yafi said, over the last 10 or 12 years, pension funds have seen this crisis over and over. We saw the global financial crisis in 2008, 2009. In fact, we saw a crisis in 2012, 2013, 2015, around the doomsday era. We've now seen a crisis 2017, 2018, 2019, and 2020 from the banking crisis to COVID, to Russia, and to debt crisis that year. So in all this, if you look at the trajectory of pension funds, it's remained very resilient. Again, because of the principle of compounding, so quite clearly, I think pension funds will weather the storm. Um, whilst in the immediate term, it looks a little bit worrying, I will say that if we look at the big picture in terms of the growth and even factor in a potential haircut on our assets, the growth in terms of the Ghanaian pension story has been quite phenomenal over the last 15 years or so. So there is every reason for you to be hopeful as far as the long term is concerned, even though there are quite immediate pains that we will go through, but given the history of the pension funds in Ghana, I think we will weather the storm and hopefully everybody go home with something in their kitty. If you have the likes of access and co protecting clients' interests, I think you should remain hopeful and believe in the path that you are on. Um, that will be my few words. Thank you. Thank you, Isaac. If we stay put together, we'll be able to weather the storms together. Thank you for that. We'd like to remind you to continue sharing your questions with us in the comment section and the Q&A session, and they will be addressed shortly. Um, the next person to share with us is Mr. Pakofi Ankuma, the General Manager of Access Pension Trust. Um, he will be speaking to us on the impact of the Access Sponsored Schemes, and by that we mean the CEDA Pension Scheme, the CEDA Provident Fund, the Access Pension Plan as well. Mr. Pakofi Ankuma, we can see your video, so please take it from there. Thank you. Thank you very much, Opare, and good morning to um, everybody on the call. Uh, particularly excited with the numbers that we are seeing. Um, I've seen a lot of questions coming in already on what is the impact of what is happening on people's pension funds. I think people are generally worried. So my presentation will try to break it down to the simplest of terms. Um, I know a lot of financial jargons have been thrown around, um, but all in all, it comes down to what does it mean for my pension fund? So my presentation will seek to try and break it down um, for your benefit as a scheme member. So my presentation will take the structure, um, we'll talk about the debt exchange structure, how it looks like, what the immediate impact would be, what the other impacts would be for the pension funds, 
um, as well as steps we are taking to address the impact and then we'll conclude. Um, the debt ex exchange program uh, proposed by government is in, the, is in this form. Uh, they are looking to are looking at bondholders, current bondholders to exchange their current bonds at face value um, into four different bonds, basically. So if you bought a bond of 100,000 three years ago, for a five-year bond for three years, three years ago, what government is saying is that that 100,000 uh, bond that you bought three years ago, they want to restructure it into four different bonds. Uh, the short bond, the immediate bond, the medium term bond, and then the long term term bond. And the maturities are stated there. So these bonds will mature on different dates. 17% of whatever you invested would be uh, maturing by 2027. So we converted to the short bond, which will mature in 2027. The second part of 17% will be paid uh, mature in 2029. The third by 2032. And then the fourth part, that's 41% by 2037. Um, in terms of principal, they'll be paying it based on what I've shown on the uh, on this side of the slide. Two equal installments for the short bond, two equal installments for the immediate term bond, uh, medium term bond, three equal installments, and then five equal installments for uh, the long term bond. However, for interest payment 2023, we are not looking to get any interest. Um, 5% interest in 2024 and 10% till maturity. Now, what does this mean going forward? As I mentioned, you are exchanging your principal, you are exchanging your principal, you bought government, the government bond at, um, into the, the, the exchange. You are exchanging that for a new bond, basically. Um, it does not take into consideration, as far as you're concerned, the interest component or the coupons that you are receiving. So as at the time the announcement was made, effective 1st December, what it was was that pension funds were normally accruing interest that uh, would have normally come in after every six months, at the end of every six months, pension funds, I mean, government pays coupons on bonds that we hold or pension funds or even individuals hold. Um, what they are effectively saying is that if you have accrued interest, expecting government to pay that interest or that coupon within the next few months, since the last payment of coupon, then you should not expect it. And the cutoff date they've given is 23rd December. So we should not expect. So immediately what we have done is that we have reversed all accrued coupons that are not due as at 23rd December. This means that your fund or your unit price within that fund would drop. So you would make immediate losses basically because the interest that you're expecting from the government bond is not going to come. It is the principle that you are exchanging. So by the structure of it, um, you notice that I think a number of you saw that immediately the announcement happened as a fair December, your values dropped by about 2.54% for those of us on the access pension plan. And those on the, of us on the CEDA pension scheme lost about 1.6% of our value. And for the CEDA Provident Fund, we saw a drop of about 1.67%. Uh, what does this mean in terms of returns? This means that uh, as of year to date, we, as at first December, we're expecting to, the fund to have returned about 59.2% for the access pension plan. But since the reversal happened, the fund returns dropped um, to 56.7%. Similarly, CEDA pension scheme made a mandatory tier two occupational pension scheme also dropped from 42.1% to 39.1%. And then the CEDA provident fund also dropped from 39.7% to 37.5%. So that accounted for the first drop. Now, what does what other impacts are we expecting um, with this new bond structure? As mentioned, there will be 0% coupon um, next year, 5% in 2024, and 10% going forward. Now, typically, pension funds plan to pay out or liquidity to pay out benefits using some of these coupons as well as contributions coming in and maturities. 
Now with the extension of maturities and reduction of interest rates, available cash to pay out benefits as liquidity would have reduced substantially. So we're expecting to see a, 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 a huge dry up or a liquidity dry up uh, in the near to medium term. Uh, this also means that, as I said, the interest rates have been dropped, so reduction in, in future returns. So whereas this year we are seeing in excess of 40% returns for most of our funds, um, with the new the proposal from government, even though we have not accepted it, accepted it I think Anari Affair already mentioned that we haven't accepted it, uh, we will be seeing some uh, reduction in returns. Uh, now, I have also mentioned in his presentation that we have substantially increased our exposure to dollar assets, so investments in dollars. Now, this means that once there is an appreciation of the dollar or a depreciation of the dollar, it would impact your value. Let me use this simple analogy to explain it. If you had bought dollars at the beginning of the year, for seven CDs. So you bought a hundred, got a hundred dollars for seven CDs. Your CD equivalent of the hundred dollars would have been 700 CDs. If you had not invested that money at all and you've kept the money under your pillow or in your bedroom or wherever, as at end of November, that value was close to 15 CDs to a dollar. So that 700 CDs would have now been 1,500 CDs if you had changed it or if you had sold it at the time. In recent times, and I think most of us who follow the news and how the dollar is doing can tell that the CD is now reversing the losses it's experienced or it's, 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 it's incurred over the, the, the year. So now the dollar value has dropped to about 13 cents. So whereas about two weeks ago, you were looking at your dollar equivalent, I mean, your CD equivalent of say 1,500 CDs. Uh, because of the performance of the CD, now that CD equivalent is 1,300 CDs for a hundred dollar investment that you have made. And that is exactly what you are seeing on your statement. Because of our exposure, and I mentioned that on the access pension plan, we have 55% of our investment allocated to dollar assets. Um, and then for the CEDA schemes, like the occupational pension schemes, we have about 40, 42% allocated to dollar assets. So with the changes in the dollar, um, or the CD's performance, you notice that there will be some slight changes. Uh, indeed, what drove the growth of our pension funds over the last month or so uh, has to do with the, the CD performance of our euro bonds and our GLD. And within just October alone, the CD depreciated quite heavily against the dollar. So that shot up a lot of our gains. And members who were in the scheme at the time I'm sure we're very happy seeing those beautiful gains on their portfolios as a result of the dollar appreciation. It's unfortunate that um, going as of now, the dollar, the CD seems, I mean, it is fortunate for us as a country, sorry, that the CD seems to be appreciated against the dollar. But on net on net basis, you realize that you are still in positive real returns when it comes to uh, your perform your fund performance over the quarter. Now, what does this mean? Uh, for us to address liquidity, um, people who will draw in, what, 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 what are we going to do as trustees? We have a responsibility to ensure that we safeguard or we maintain the value of scheme members' balances within the scheme. So what we are saying is that for those of us on the access pension plan, if you have not met the minimum holding period or you are not going on retirement as much as possible, do not apply to withdraw. If you decide to withdraw, you will be forced to process your benefits at market values. And current market values means you will be taking home a bit, a bit of a loss, um, looking at where your balances are, if you are not five years or more, or you're not going on retirement. Similarly, for the Cedar Provident Fund, if you've not met the 10th anniversary of your contributions into the Cedar Provident Fund, this goes to the occupational tier three pension scheme. The access pension plan is a personal pension or the tier three personal pension scheme um, managed by access pension. 
The CEDA problem fund is the occupational tier three pension scheme managed by, as I mentioned, these have a lot of employees and individuals who work for those employers contributing to it. So if you're not going on retirement or you're not, you've not met the 10th anniversary of your contributions, we advise strongly that you hold on. Once you meet it, you'll be able to withdraw without any, or without us selling on the market, which will present you with some losses. So please hold on as much as possible if you have not met the 10th anniversary. Um, once you meet it or you're going on retirement, you paid out your full value without any market losses. And for CEDA pension scheme, of course, it is the mandatory tier two and tier two, you cannot withdraw unless you're going on retirement. So once you're going on retirement, you'll be paid out your full market value. I mean, your full value on your statement without any market losses. So those are the three, I mean, the key things you are doing to address liquidity. We are also looking at diversifying the portfolio, largely to reduce our exposure to government assets, as well as to reduce our exposure to Ghana specific risk. We don't want going forward in the next few years, uh, there is another cycle of uh, crisis that comes onto Ghana and then the pension portfolio is heavily impacted because we are heavily exposed to Ghana. So we want to diversify away from Ghana and we have already started discussions with the NPRA. And NPRA is looking positive at that, positively at that, for us to look at other countries for us to invest so that we diversify from exposure to just Ghana. In conclusion, what I would say to you is do not be in a hurry to withdraw. It is important to stay invested. Your money is safe. Don't give yourself heart. It is fine to check your statements on a regular basis, but also know that it's also fine to see volatilities, changes in values. Um, on, on your statement. It does not mean you are, you are losing out. It may mean that in the short term, there is some losses or some gains, but that don't let it define your investment outlook. Your money is safe, so stay invested. Thank you very much. Sorry. Thank you, Pakofi, for that presentation and um, explaining to us what all of this is going to have in terms of impact on uh, benefits or pension funds. Um, would like to go into the Q&A sessions where the um, our panelists or our speakers will address our questions for us. If you are just joining us, this is a webinar being organized by Access Pension Trust. The, some of the topics we've discussed have been the performance of the access funded schemes. We've also looked at the debt exchange program and its implication, and Parkofi just ended with the impact of all of this on the access sponsored schemes. With Because of time, I'd like to quickly zoom into the Q&A sessions, and we have some questions here that we'd like to start with. We also encourage you to keep sending them in the comment section. So the very first question we have here is that, we are told pension funds are not marked to market. If so, what is accounting for the recent reduction in tier three balances? I'd like to throw this to Pakofi and Koma. And we are getting a lot of uh, comments from the audience that they want us to be as, as lay as possible and use normal English terms without so many jargon. So Pakofi, please start off with the first question for us. Let me just uh, read it again. We are told pension funds are not marked to market. If so, what is accounting for the recent reduction Action in tier three balances. Thank you very much, um, Opare. Um, I think I touched on this on in my presentation, but let me just re echo it once again. As I mentioned, government is asking us to, or bondholders, to exchange their current bond holdings with new bond holdings based on the structure that I shared earlier. Um, this means if coupons. I mean, typically what we would have wanted is government to pay us the accrued value or the value as at the date uh, they intend us exchanging our bonds for the new bonds. Uh, unfortunately, or professionally, the structure for government to do that work, I mean, for the debt exchange program to happen will be on the face value, basically the principal. So any coupons or any interest we are expecting to receive since the last coupon payment until 23rd December, if it is any coupon we're expecting after 23rd December, it will not come in. So that means we have to reverse all coupons we're expecting after 23rd December, which we have accrued onto your member statements. 
And that is why you saw the drop in value as at first December. Subsequently, we have about a little over 40% in the Cedar Provident Fund in US that, that dollar denominated investments. And over 55, our 55 percent of our uh, access pension plan investments also in dollar denominated investments. With the strengthening of the CD in recent weeks, it means that our dollar exposure or our dollar value would start dropping. So I use this analogy: if you had bought a hundred dollars at the beginning of the year for seven CDs, you would have bought, you would have had seven hundred CDs in your. If you should have exchanged it at the time. Or your value would have been 700 CDs. As at November, that same hundred dollars was now trading for about thousand and for 15 CDs to a dollar. So that value of 700 CDs would have appreciated to about 1,500 CDs just by keeping that money. Now, within the last two weeks, that same hundred dollars is now trading for 12 dollars, 12 CDs to a dollar. So that 1,500 that you had at the end of November is now possibly 1,200 Ghana CDs. And that is what you are seeing. So the strengthening of the CD against the dollar is affecting the value or is influencing the value you see on your statement. But so that would be what I would say for now. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, Bakofi. Um, I believe the answers were very, very clear. So we'll go on to the second question we have here. And um, our panelist, Isaac Bama, will be addressing that for us. The question is, kindly explain the difference between haircuts and the proposed debt restructure and debt exchange since they both lead to loss of revenue. Can you explain the difference between haircuts and the proposed debt exchange since they both lead to loss of revenue? So Isaac, please, if you can hear me. Yes, Isaac, I can hear you. Um, can you hear me? Yes, please, we can hear you. All right, so um, if I got a question, the person is asking the difference between haircut and debt exchange. Yes. And both leads to loss in revenue. Sure. To be very honest, haircuts well and truly is a street name. What you are going through through the debt exchange is revaluation of the bonds. So, well, there's nothing like really when you look at the technical word of it. But I get the impulse of the question. The impulse of the question is that through this debt exchange, um, there will be loss on pension assets. And here, the loss is coming from reduction in the coupons you receive annually. I did make mention that if you look at the coupons that would have been paid next year for pension fund, we could potentially lose as an industry about eight to nine million, nine billion um, Ghana cities, which you are not getting next year. So there's yeah. a lot. There's a loss of income there. Let me use the revenue here. So well and truly, both will need to decline in the revaluation, in the value of the bonds. That's what is going to happen. I, haircut, I think, has been used much more on the street, but basically the government is revaluing your bonds. So if your bonds is worth 60 pesos to one Ghana city, by doing this debt exchange, it potentially could be worth maybe 40 or 30 pesos to one Ghana city in market terms. But if market correct, it could be up beyond what uh, we, we, we are being exchanged for. All right, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we have another question, so we'll quickly go on to that. What will be the implication if we do not accept, I believe the person is referring to pension schemes, if we do not accept the exchange program proposed by the government and we would like to um, call on George to address that for us, that's George Alvati. Thank you. Thank you. I, thank you, Isaac. Yes, so, so maybe I'll look at it from two, two angles. One is, one is that the government is saying we are broke. I mean, indirectly. And they will struggle to pay. So hence, they need to exchange those debts so that they can streamline it. If we do not accept it, meaning that the probability of the defaulting is much, much higher. Um, if, if, if my memory serves me correct, in the last, uh, in the recent budget, close to about 60 or 65% or so in terms of revenue that will be generated may or slightly go into servicing of interest. If that's the case, then we also won't have money to do any other thing. So the likelihood of, of 
the potential default is much higher, should this debt um, exchange not happen or not, so not, not be a success? I'm not too sure what the threshold out of the 137 that internally they have to make it successful. I understand the similar one that was done in Jamaica, even though some different technologies was about 95% or above um, in terms of success rate. If that's the case, then we need a lot to happen. And the rest will, because government will still have other forms of revenue, will be able to meet those other obligations. So it still needs to be a success. Just that at current terms, um, we may struggle or government may struggle a bit. Then on the other side too, if we don't go, currently based on what the Bank of Ghana has shared with the banks, um, there's been, they've been, they've been sort of tightened up. And if the banks are the ones who typically provide you with that um, liquidity or market making platform, where should you want to exit some of your bonds, they will buy it off you. If that market is absent, meaning that you may not have that regular secondary market opportunities if you do not opt in. So if you don't opt in, typically you will have to wait till maturity before you can receive your fruits. So those are, those, those are my thoughts on the question. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, the next question is, with the proposed maturity extension and interest reduction, does it mean if I am retiring next year, I may get my contribution in five to six years time with reduced interest? Um, Nana Yafi, Bama, please, if you can hear me, kindly take this for us. Yeah, oh, thank you very much. So the answer is no. If you are retiring, I mean, next year, you really, I mean, get, I mean, what is probably showing on your balance today and potential return from now to the day you retire. So if your balance today is 10,000 CDs, and between now and when you retire, the scheme does additional 5%, then you go with 10,500. So that is what will happen. Like I showed you in my presentation, the scheme is quite prepared for liquidity event coming due as a result of retirement for the CEDA pension, for the CEDA provident, everyone who has reached that 10 year milestone, we have enough liquidity for you. And for the access pension plan, if you've done, I mean, the five year and you desire, I mean, to retire, we have the money for you. This is not to say that when you've crossed 10 years, five years, you should definitely come for your money if you don't need it. But we have enough liquidity for everyone who wants out of the fund. Thank you. Thank you, Dana. We have enough liquidity for everyone who wants out of the fund. So the next question is, uh, okay, the person is asking, with a projected decline in returns over the next few years, is it worth continuing any form of investment or savings? And I'll ask Sparkofi to help us with that. Um, thank you very much, Alpari, a very interesting question. Um, what I'd say is that just like currently you have something to live on, even in the tough times that we are in, it's as a result of a decision you took earlier to save, to put something aside for rainy days like these. Um, I'm, I'm not sure rainy days are over yet. I'm sure there will be more rainy days in the future. So having an objective, saving towards that objective is always critical. So yes, my simple answer to you is yes, it's important to continue saving. Um, if, save with an objective. Don't save because everybody is saving. Have a reason for saving. And once you are doing that, give yourself some time, experience the opportunities, enjoy the ride. And I'm sure at the end of it, when things are tough and you need your money, you will definitely get it. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you for Akofi. Definitely, uh, we will continue to invest. Um, there's a question here, which I'd like to forward to uh, Nanari Afi. So the question is, there is speculation of um, restructuring to, or in, with regards to the government of Ghana euro bonds. So what will be the impact on funds um, if 
that is done, considering the 30% exposure as has been shared. What are the mitigating factors currently in place to reduce any impacts? Should there be a haircut on the um, euro bonds or should there be a freeze on coupon payments? Nana. All right, all right, thank you and thanks for the question. So like I said in my presentation, we had anticipated a restructuring earlier this year. And we asked ourselves, I mean, between the local city bond and the euro bond, which one would we prefer should restructuring, I mean, happen across both fronts? And our simple answer was the euro bond, simply because we feel the euro bonds are held by offshore investors who have the resources to drag out any restructuring conversation in court. So eventually, yes, there would be a restructuring, but we feel the government may find it difficult, you know, getting their way on the euro bond compared to the local currency. So yes, because of that, I mean, we feel we are a bit, I mean, secured over there. From what we've heard, right, from what we heard, I mean, on the euro bond, I mean, side, we hear of a principal haircut up to 30%. That's what government has put out there and an interest haircut of up to 30%. Thankfully for the bonds we bought, we bought them at huge discount to face value. So even if you are going to get a principal haircut of 30%, we still have enough on the principal to keep going. If they are going to give an interest haircut of 30%, we still earn interest compared to the local bonds where 2023, there's no interest at all in 2025, just about 5%. So yes, that feeds into the potential low return going, I mean, forward. But on the whole, it's better, I mean, to earn something small on 30 to 40% of our euro bonds holding than if it had been in local currency bond where going into next year, there won't be any liquidity at all. So that's our position. Once the haircut discussion, I mean, goes over there, will definitely be imparted. We just feel there will be a drag out. And whilst the back and forth is ongoing over there, we may still earn our full coupon on our full principal. But should there be a resolution over there, I mean, quickly, then we'll be impacted. But it wouldn't be as bad as the local currency side. And don't forget, we also have a dollar hedge over there. Should we revert to the normal depreciation we've seen in the past, taking this year as an outlier out, you are likely to get some 8% depreciation over there. Adding that to your coupon of 8% gives you some 16% on the euro bond side. So I think we are pretty much confident going forward by the structure of our portfolio. Thank you. Thank you. Nana, please, before you go, somebody wants some clarification. Um, during the, your presentation, you mentioned that it wasn't healthy to be monitoring. <laughs> but the person wants to know why, given that um, he's not withdrawing, so he wants to see it. What's the, what's the touch? Sure, I, I get you. No, so I said, I mean, my personal opinion. <laughs> I didn't say, I mean, we shouldn't yeah. check. And I said that because, I mean, for where we work at Access, I mean, thankfully, we don't have access to our provident fund, right? And sure. for the pension fund, I mean, obviously, we can only assess it during retirement. And I took that decision about two years ago. So why should I even be checking my balance every month? This money I don't have access to anyways. Mm -hmm. Why should I be checking and giving myself, I mean, heartache, knowing very well that investment is never a smooth ride. You know, Ghanaian investors, and I agree, we are used to constant returns on our monies, you know, over time. That is why nobody wants to do equities, which is a good asset class because nobody wants to see, I mean, losses. So just to, I mean, rid myself of potential heartache and heart attacks, seeing that investment comes with volatility, I told myself, I'm not going to check my balance. And I feel that once, I mean, you trust the institution you are investing with, and you know the institution will play by the laws, right? And you have track record with that institution. For those of us who have been with Access since the inception of this at seven CSS, your CEDA pension fund is up by 700%, right? 
there's a track record. So why do you constantly check your balance daily? And we do get a cause. People call in, panicking. Some even accuse, I mean, as of theft. And we feel that is not, I mean, I mean, fair. And therefore, if you are investing for the long term, just allow your monies to work for you. And you'll be better off, right? You'll be better off. Nobody will run away with your money. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Pakufi, please take the next one for me. So um, the person is asking, I take notice of the fact that you have declined the debt exchange in its current form, and that is good to hear. But is it possible for the government to have its own way and um, outrightly de de decline to listen to what the chamber is asking and, and, and say they are refusing is take it or leave it? Is it possible? And if so, what will be the impact? Thank you very much. Um, the possibility is there, but just like any bond program, I mean, it's a legal contract between two parties. Um, if we are not happy with it as, as it currently is and it goes to the wire, we we'll have to exercise our rights under the, the uh, our legal rights under the, the contract. So this is something that the industry is looking at entire not just access what the industry is looking at i do not want to preempt um, the discussions going on but as in as it is in current in its current form i mean we have rejected it i think the labor unions have also spoken and um, the collective investment schemes have also spoken and other players within the space have also spoken uh, so we await some feedback from government on what the next steps will be thank you Okay, thank you. Um, and now I have to bring you back again. Somebody wants to know that for those who have retired and still have their investments with Axis, what is going to happen to their investment? They would like to know if any of these discussions that have gone on will have any impact on their investment as well. Um, yes, of course. So, I mean, in as long as I mean you are invested in the scheme, yes. But what we've done. You know, access we run a constituent, I mean, fund structure mm -hmm. where clients who are in retirement or inching close to retirement are put in a safe bucket investment, right? So, yeah, I mean, he thought to the safe bucket investment was government bonds, right? I and mean, we yeah, are in this situation where government bond is being going to be, I mean, restructured. But so yes, I mean, definitely, I mean, once they are invested in the fund, they would enjoy, I mean, the returns, the benefit, and the risk all other members would enjoy. The advantage in staying invested in a fund like this is the liquidity, right? Liquidity. I mean, when you need money, you have the money. If those same clients had taken their monies out and invested in government bonds, for instance, much as individuals are exempt, if they needed their money when the bond hasn't matured, they would go to the market and sell, and they will sell at a huge discount. Our commitment to those retirees is that when you need your money, we'll give it to you at the amortized cost. No mark to market here, right? So that is the beauty and advantage for those retirees who are still invested in our funds compared to if they had directly invested in the underlying government security. They would have been affected big time if they wanted liquidity prior to maturity. Thank you, thank you, Nana. So to those asking, you would get the balance you are asking for as Nana has just said. Um, to George and Isaac, I have a question for you, both of you, and uh, your comments will be uh, needed on it. Somebody wants to know, how long we should expect all of this to last? I mean, the challenges that the country is going through, how long should we expect it to last until things will come back to normal? So George and Isaac, please. Uh, maybe we'll take um, George first and then Isaac after us. Thank you. Thank you, Isaac, as well. And it's, it's, a, it's a tough one um to to have that um ball to see exactly when things were were settled just that we can give some indicatives um so the financial market is really driven by two things um it's confidence or stock trust or information in this case what we are lacking is the confidence and the trust 
So once with this IMF transaction going through, you typically will have that big brother overseeing that in terms of physical um, checks, we are being prudent about it. So that, that is one of the good things that we may see or we should see happening. Even though they've announced the SLA today with a staff level agreement, it's a preliminary agreement. They still have to share the details or close out of this action program and especially what exactly they plan to do for the IMF to approve. So we may not, um, that may probably be another month or two or so. So that is what we need to see on the local front. Certainly, we also will have to see government also showing an indication that they are in this with us together, and that will also renew their confidence. So that is on the local front. Certainly, um, because we have a largely smaller economy compared to the, what happened in the global market, we also an open economy. Anything that happens globally certainly does have an impact on us. Global inflation numbers do not seem to be coming down anytime soon, um, at least for the next year to 18 months or so. So should those things continue to happen, it has that negative impact on us in terms of cost of even the USD or cost of financing and balance of payments. Meaning that we may have to, um, things who will not naturally correct itself in the next 18 months or so until the global market also settles um, a bit. So um, give or take, not putting numbers or trying to hold myself to numbers, we should give ourselves or give tolerate another 12 to 18 months for us to start seeing um, some significant um, impacts in, in, in all of these. Um, maybe I'll pass the baton to, to Ike. If I miss up Hello, Ike. Hi, Isaac. Hi. So, uh, debt operations is always a very emotive subject and it's a very painful process. Um, honestly, there are too many moving parts. Um, that encompasses this operation that government is taking. Resulting from that, I'm not able to give anything beyond this week. At this moment, we should look beyond, we should look for week by week because there are too many moving parts and it's a very emotive and painful process. And so I cannot really give a three year, one year look. Um, next week, things could change significantly, whether for positive or negative. So I'd rather say let's leave on a daily basis and trust the managers as access to take the best decision for pension funds. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Isaac. Pack of EM, so. I know you did explain how the after the um, um, announcement of no coupon in 2023, we there had to be some reversal. And from the person also making reference to the QA, but the person is asking for um in layman terms, if you can go over again why there had to be per the QA that was shared earlier, there had to be some reversals of interest. If you can just um, lay it down again in a layman term for the person, please. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, so um, just to reiterate, let's just say you bought a bond, a government of Ghana bond, two-year government of Ghana bond at the beginning of the year. So January 15, you bought a two-year government of Ghana bond at 100,000 Ghana cities. By 15th of July, government will pay you the first coupon. And maybe the coupon is, let's say, 20% per annum. So by 15th July, government will pay you the first half of the, of the 20%. That's 10% of um, the yearly um, or the, the coupon rate. So that will come to about 10,000 CDs. Now you're expecting that by the next six months, government will pay you the other 10%. So by 15 January 2023, government should pay the additional 10% since the contract says it's 20% coupon. Typically for funds like this, what we do is we accrue the interest so that members who are in the fund enjoy the returns as, so that you don't leave, when you are leaving the fund, you enjoy the return because even though the returns hasn't come in or the coupon hasn't come in, your value as at a particular date should be, I mean, would be the value 
of the coupon we are expecting as at that date. So as at 1st December, we found out from the government that the coupons beyond 2023 and 2022, uh, 23rd December 2022 would not be paid. So if we have approved any interest expecting for you to, for government to pay that coupon, say by 15th of January the next year, government is effectively not going to pay. So whatever we've accrued on your balance, we need to reverse it so that it comes down to the zero or zero percent that we're expecting going forward. So basically that, that is what was done and that is what affected uh, the balances. But beyond that, I explained that the performance of the CD um, within the short, I mean, within the last few weeks also has affected or has influenced uh, the performance of the portfolio. We are optimistic that uh, most likely the city will gain, I mean, the, the city might lose some further value going forward um, in, the, in the near term, um, because our fundamentals continue to be weak as a country. Um, I'm pretty sure that we'll make the gains that uh, the, uh, will gain what we are losing currently, um, especially by Q1 next year um, when the dollar strengthens. So uh, for me, I will not be in a rush to withdraw. And as I mentioned, if you should decide to withdraw, you don't make the conditions that we outlined earlier, you'll probably be taking a bit of a loss beyond what you're already seeing in your statement. So avoid as much as possible the form of drawing. And this, I think somebody was mentioning that we, we engaged some of the employees uh, earlier this year or this month, and we didn't make them know that there was going to be a change in the values of skin members. I mean, we would have been happy if we had a crystal ball to predict what was going to happen in the future, we do not have the crystal ball. So we can't predict that what is happening might be better or might be worse in coming, in coming years. We're just looking at the current situation and we make the judgments based on that. So we couldn't have predicted that the city was going to appreciate is the dollar when we engaged you. It is happening now and that is what is reflecting your statement. So we couldn't tell you if, I mean, what would have told you is that your value is what you're going to take home. So nothing changes from that. It's your value that you see on your balance or your statement that you're taking home. It may be that the value might appreciate or depreciate based on market conditions, but it is the value you see in your statement that you're taking home if you should withdraw and you've met the 10th anniversary or you're retiring. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Bank of it. Just related to what you've answered. Um, so somebody is asking that from um Reuters, that's the news broadcasting side. There's been a projection that the dollar will come back stronger in 2023. And um, there's been a couple of questions around this particular topic. Just so yes or no. Does it mean that um from what you have said, if the dollar appreciates or if the CD depreciates, it's in est by extension okay. affect our balance? It should be should no, we... so so I, I think the diversity. Oh, let me take that question. Oh, yeah, yeah, sorry. Sorry. I mean, yeah, yeah. Let me let me take that question. So so really, I mean, our bet in investing in those underlying dollar investments wasn't driven by short term gain. Yeah. We're just lucky the CD depreciated, which is bad for the country, however, good for the fund. And therefore, the high returns we see generally on our fund. But it was a long term, I mean, bet. It was really a long term bet. Over the last, I mean, 20 years, we all have the records. The CD constantly depreciates against the dollar. The average has been around 10, 11%. This year was an outlier. So yes, we may expect this debt restructuring and the announced IMF staff level agreement, right? To benefit the country in terms of the strengthening city. But we are all Ghanaians and we know that our city cannot be compared to a global reserve currency like the USD. So over the long term, the CD may depreciate against the dollar. So irrespective of what happens in the interim, our strategy as a pension scheme is to ensure that when people are retired 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, five years from today, right? Their accumulated income can do 
what they plan to do with the money. We live in a country where everything is indexed to the dollar. If you are saving to buy a house, the houses are indexed to dollar. If you are saving to enjoy some good vacations, plane tickets are in dollars. So we are not going to change, I mean, this USD I mean, strategy. We understand there will be short-term volatility, but if you have a long-term view, and really that is what we expect our contributors to have, that long-term view. If you have that long-term view, I dare say that there is no way our CD would outperform a global reserve currency like the USD. And therefore your investment in our schemes would have crude benefit to you for the long term. So that is what I want to say. We didn't take that bet to enjoy an 18 month, a six month, I mean, returns. Yes, there's volatility, but PK keep mentioning, in spite of the drop of your balance by about six, 7% over the last two weeks, your return is about 36%. For the provident funds, for the access pension plan, you are about 47% up, better than average inflation. And we feel going forward that USD position would be what would help and safeguard your retirement going forward. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, Nana, this one, I don't know if you want to comment or you want to pass it to maybe Isaac and George. Um, I know it has somebody, um, one of the panelists mentioned a country that has gone through a similar thing, but the person would want to know if there are a few other examples of countries that have gone through similar debt restructuring and how such restructuring affects the um, pension funds in particular. So if you have any examples that's readily that you might want to share. And of course, Isaac can do it as well. Okay. Yes, sir. Sorry, um, Isaac. Yes, sir. If I if I got your question right, um, you're asking the similar experience from other debt exchange we've seen across the globe. Exactly. Okay. So um close. Closer home will be what Zambia is going through, but Zambia didn't do a domestic debt restructuring, if my memory serves me right. I think Ghana is doing a domestic debt restructuring mainly because our domestic market is very small and the cost that government incurs in issuing bonds is very high. So that's the main reason our market is extremely small. And so that's what is that's the main difference. Um, I think Jamaica, um, George earlier mentioned about Jamaica and so on and so on. Ghana may be a bit peculiar in the sense that if you look at the time that we announced that we are going to IMF and the staff level agreement six months down there, it's quite a short um, space of time for us to be able to um, get this done. For me, reading the room, it tells me that um, probably the Western partners see more at play for Ghana than actually is there most peaceful country around the sub region. You look at our sub region, the countries are, and most of them are affected by some terrorism or some violence. And so having a peaceful location in this part of the world will be key to our allies to ensure that we don't run into street fights in default. So that potential has helped in Ghana getting there. So Ghana's situation may be extremely peculiar in the sense that hardly will you find somebody doing a domestic it's not normal. It always has become paramount because we spend about 75% of our interest payment just paying domestic bondholders. And so that's the main reason why we are doing, Ghana is doing this, and then subsequently we will do the standard. So whilst there are examples, I think ours is quite peculiar. Uh, in nature, if you even look at the time you are getting the agreement and the standard debt conversation, the big elephant in the room is the domestic market, and, and that's why it's happening. But really, there are similarities, but Ghana's own is, is, is unique on its own. Yeah, Isaac, come down. Sure, thank you, thank you, Isaac, thank you. So, um, Hakofi, there's a question for you. So, that somebody is asking that you mentioned in your presentation that access is engaging the regulator. 
um, in terms of some of the other avenues that pension funds can be invested. But he's asking if you think current economic situation should force the NPRA to rethink the guidelines in terms of the asset allocations. Um, yes, um, I think the initial discussions and the position by NPRA, NPRA looks uh, very amenable to opportunities away from what we, the traditional asset classes that we've been, we've been playing in. Um, so indeed, it's still a discussion. I mean, we, we have taken some decisions as trustees, uh, but we continue to engage the NPRA. So the NPRA is amenable to other alternatives away from government of Ghana. Um, Thank you, Pakofi. And um, we'd like to remind um, ask, remind you to keep bringing in your questions. We'll be answering all of them as, as the program goes on. Um, we promise to close by 11.50. So we have about 10 more minutes for the questions. Please keep them coming. Um, I'll read the next one, um, which is, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, sure. So somebody wants to know. Um, he has, he had. He's in the provident fund. He's invested for a while. Part of you, I think you take this for us. He he wants to use his provident fund to pay for a mortgage. He's not done the ten years minimum. Does this change anything? I mean, all this that is happening. Does it change anything? If he wants to use his provident fund to apply for a mortgage. Thank you. Um. If I mean, so if you are cashing out your provident fund for a mortgage, definitely you would, I mean, um, based on what you've not provided for liquidity, we have to plan our liquidity in a manner that it will satisfy those who we know, or uh, we know they are, are withdrawing, that's retirement or 10th anniversary. For such an individual, unfortunately, you would uh, be treated, I mean, you'd be processed and paid out at market value. Unless, of course, uh, the, mortgage house intends to place a lien so they might not be withdrawing they are yeah. placing a lien on your account that is to say hold that account for us we are not using that to pay but you're just putting it down when he defaults or when she defaults then we, we pay out then that that you do not suffer anything but if you are withdrawing to pay out the mortgage house then you will be paying at market prices thank you Thank you. Thank you, Nana. Nana, so somebody has a follow-up to the explanation you gave with the dollar-denominated investment. The person is asking if the CD should continue to appreciate what will be, like, will anything change in terms of access investments and portfolio if the CD should continue um, appreciating? Mm -hmm. yeah, but, um, so, uh, it's, it's, it's a good question. It's a fair question, but I mean, we can, we can we can debate. I mean that. I mean, do we expect? I mean, the CD to continually appreciate over the last, I mean, few weeks of the month. I mean, this is my view about the currency strength. First of all, is because of the announced debt exchange program, which means to the market that is positive news. Secondly. <laughs> Some of us, I mean, run businesses. We all want to end the year you know, on a good note, right? I mean, we, we, we need to end the year on a good note, balance out, I mean, our books. And I feel, given the IMF discussion, given the spirit of depreciation we saw, all of a sudden, our offshore debt, our strip, the local debt, a strengthening, I mean, of the city helps, I mean, rebalance, I mean, stuff out. And we feel, I mean, this depreciation, I mean, this appreciation of the city we are seeing is mainly, I mean, to correct, I mean, the books to ensure that we end the year, I mean, well. Will it continue into next year? Nobody can tell. Do we expect the city, I mean, to, I mean, fall below 10? Personal view, I mean, no, right? However, even if it does, even if it does, we will still be in the money in that, I mean, for the euro bonds we bought, we bought most of them at an exchange rate of around seven, right? So we'll still be, I mean, in the money, returns will still be positive, albeit your balance will reduce because of the strength of the city. But like I said, over the long term, we know how strong 
the USD is as a reserve currency, and we do not expect the CD to outperform the dollar. So that is the position over there. Yes, we may see that continuing, but at the point, once the government has balanced their books for the purposes of this IMF negotiation, they will, they will stop. Really, nothing has changed. What, what has changed? Has dollar supply in the country increased? No, right? Is demand still there? Probably yes. We all know the bulk of the demand was in October when people were important for Christmas. Now we've gone past that stock. So we are okay. Next year we'll enter into the dividend repatriation season. And we may see I'm in pressure on the city as it is. Don't forget, I mean, we don't have access to the international market. Over the last, I mean, four years, we've used first quarter to go out there and borrow to show up our city. That opportunity is not available to us again. So we don't expect the city to perpetually, I mean, strengthen even over the medium term. But within now and December, we should expect some strengthening, right, of the city. That would impact the fund. But like I keep saying, I mean, your principal will still may be up in terms of return. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And to you, our listeners and our viewers, we'd like to um, encourage you to keep your questions coming. In the next five minutes, we'll take a remark from the CEO of Addis Pension Trust. But before then, um, to George, somebody wants to know what will happen to pension funds should the government default on the local bonds. So George. Um, thank you. Thank you, Isaac. So it's just it's just like somebody who owes you and is unable to pay you. Typically what you will do is to take the person to court, then maybe if they need collateral so you can attach it. It's a lot difficult to do something similar in this instance for, from the government side. But the government is also very mindful that should there be a default, it has it has a lot of replications, even broadly on the economy and investor confidence in the, in the short to medium term. I'll be very surprised if any government is bold enough to say that we should default. Yeah. I'm very surprised. But then now a lot of things are happening on the market and globally as well. So you, you never know. But then I I was deem, if the person allows me, I would deem that to be quite remote in terms of it's, it's actually happening. Typically, like if done now, they will still plead, come to market, and with the hope that they will have to restructure again. So the cycle or the cycle of restructuring may continue or will it extend, extend further. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, George, for that. Um, Pakofi, please, somebody wants you to briefly distinguish between the three access schemes and the returns that you um, mentioned that the various schemes have reported. So if you can kindly explain the difference between the three access schemes and what each of them has returned in terms of interest. Okay, thank you very much. So um, Access kindly has three um, in-house schemes, basically, or discretionary schemes that we manage. One is a tier two occupational pension scheme, and that is called the CEDA pension scheme. It is a tier two scheme for employers or for people who work in the formal sector and uh, have their employers enrolled onto the scheme. So if you have your employer enrolled onto a tier two scheme, it typically is an occupational pension scheme. So based on where you work, you contribute to that. That's a CEDA pension scheme. Similarly, an employer can enroll onto a tier three scheme. We call that the CEDA provident fund scheme. <clears throat> so the CEDA provident fund scheme is a tier three provident fund scheme. Individuals also can enroll into a pension scheme. We have our individual pension scheme or the personal pension plan called the Access Pension Plan. In terms of returns, the Access Pension Plan has done a year to date as a first December. When we say year to date, returns since the beginning of the year, 
till 1st December, or the date you are talking about, that's 1st December. It has returned 56.7%, even after the announcement from the finance minister. The CEDA pension scheme has done 39.1% in returns since the beginning of the year. And the CEDA Provident Fund has done 37.5% in returns since the beginning of the year. Thank you. Thank you very much, Bakofi. Um, we will be taking the closing remark from back uh, from our CEO, but before then, we'd like to go around each of the panelists and take a closing remark from them for this live session. But for all that have shared questions to us in the comment box and then on social media as so well, we'd like to um, assure you that we'll be answering all the questions there. Every one of them will be answered before the curtain is finally closed. But for this, this live session, we would take a closing remark from our, our panelists. We'll start with uh, George and then we'll take the rest. So George, please, your closing remarks. Thank you. Thank you, Isaac. And I know in all this conversation, it's a bitter pill that we need to swallow. Um, but then sometimes we need to swallow this so that we can be better off in the near term. Um, we're also mindful that the current terms um, can be better. Uh, so we are hopeful that the feedback that we've given government from both the trustees angle and the asset managers angle, it will be factored in some way somehow to help us to be able to arrive at a better conclusion. So hopefully once that is done, um, we will struggle in the near term, but then hopefully it's for a better future for all of us. Thank you, George, for that. Um, we'll continue to Isaac, um, Isaac Bama. All right, thank you, Isaac. Um, I, I will leave here with the quotes of the finance minister on April, 2020, when said this and I'm quoting him, a U-shaped recovery is started, but ours will likely be a steep drop, then a two to three year downward slide before recovery. Uh, I bring my remarks to him. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we'll move on to Nana Yafeba, Nana. All right. Thank you, so on a left, lighter note, eh? Raja Mempa Lebru, which means ka MPDD, this too shall surely pass. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Nana. So go on to Park of Yankuma. I'm, I'm afraid <laughs> for what Nana <laughs> just said. <laughs> I mean, by this good that we are not politically appropriated. Um, what I would say is that um, what is happening is, is a blip in the investment um, journey um, as much as possible. This presents us as industry players, as investors, opportunities. Um, it's a learning curve for us as much as possible. Let's try as much as possible to educate ourselves, learn a bit more on what is happening. Now we all know government of Ghana is not risk-free as it used to be. Yeah. It is the least risky asset. So as much as possible, let's learn. Um, comes with a learning curve for us. But stay invested. Stay invested because tomorrow there will be even further rains and you do not know where you might find money to sustain yourself so stay invested if you do not need your money now don't panic don't withdraw wait till when you need your money to withdraw thank you thank you very much um at this juncture i would like to invite the ceo of access pension trust in the person of mr fio Wari, to give us some remarks of his own um, before we bring the curtain finally on. So if he... Thank you very much, Isaac, and good morning to our cherished clients. Um, thank you very much for joining us for this informative webinar. I think it's been very insightful and, and I would like to ask you to join me to show appreciation to our speakers for sharing their insights and their expert advice with us. As our panelists have indicated, our nation is at a crossroad. Ghana has been trapped by debt. And as a result, interest rates have risen. Inflation, as we can see, has skyrocketed. 
And our poor CD has been on a free fall until a week ago. The impact has been painful for you and I. The cost of credit has risen beyond what businesses can afford. The purchasing power of our incomes has taken a big hit. The value of your investments have eroded rapidly. And of course, the cost of living is increasingly becoming unbearable. The, the blame game won't solve the problem. The options are few and both painful. The first option is do nothing. Two more years of a cost of living crisis like what we have seen this year will make life unbearable will become like Zimbabwe, and your investments will not even be worth the paper on which your statements are printed. The real risk is that untoward hardship can plunge our dear nation into chaos, anarchy, political unrest. And these are hard truths. The second option, the debt exchange program or a bond restructuring program like our government has done. It simply means creditors are writing off some of government's debt. It is not different from citizens deciding to contribute money to bail out our government in order to save our country. Which option is better? Do nothing and lose everything or suffer in the medium term to gain in the long term? That is the dilemma I believe the government is faced with. And I personally believe that the government has taken a wise decision, though painful. There is no ambiguity about the necessity of a debt restructuring program. It is annoying because we didn't cause it, but a decision has been taken and we need to look to the future. Our speakers have eloquently espoused what this means to us. The lack of liquidity or limited access to money to pay withdrawals. There is an implied haircut, which means your account now or in the future will not grow the same way it has grown in the past. We need to live with this truth. The era of high returns is over. And our speakers brilliantly dealt with this issue. A minute. So our speakers actually dealt with this issue. Interest rates will fall as a result of the IMF program. Businesses will post positive growth and, and decent real incomes will become achievable again on a sustainable basis. So I think the negative real returns we would endure next year and maybe 2024 will be offset by the windfall we would enjoy from the IMF program going forward. So we'll be aligning our financial sector towards global best practices as a result of this IMF program. We can no longer manufacture returns as we have seen in the past. As investors, we need to reset our expectation and accept one to 5% real returns as decent. It is all not lost, folks. There is a silver lining in this crisis, and that is what we should hope for. The cost of credit will fall. Real incomes will pick up again. Mortgages will become available to the member who wishes to take a mortgage. And these are the positives we need to look for in this particular situation. 
Our priorities at access remain very resolute. Safeguarding your pension assets, and I believe our chief investment officer has convinced you that access has been very diligent. We are very interested in ensuring that your assets continue to grow and are protected from losses to the best of our ability. We want to deepen diversification. Imagine 80% of our bonds being put in the local bonds. That would be serious injustice to you. Providing liquidity for redemption that are falling due is a mandate we want to take very seriously in this medium term. And obviously, achieving modest real returns in the medium term is a goal we'll be working towards. So as you heard, Access has aligned its, industry, its position, the industry position, to reject the debt exchange program. This may bring some bumpy road ahead. For now, the Chamber of the Corporate Trustees has presented improvements we want government to make to the current proposal. To the government refuse, we will hold out. That is currently our position. And this position may change subject to negotiation and further engagement with Ghana or with Ghana government. Holding out comes with consequences, folks. Government will just say they have defaulted on those bonds. This means the debt will no longer be serviced. There'll be no interest on the existing bonds coming through. And there will be uncertainty over when we will get our money out of those bonds. And if there's an auditor on the call, auditors will threaten that they will have to write off those debts as bad debts. So these are the odds really against us in our decision to hold out. And I believe this has direct implication on funds availability for benefit payment. Going forward, we will be requiring you, our cherished clients, to keep your investment horizon in view in deciding when you want to withdraw your money. A minimum of 10 years for people who have done, for people, for clients in the Cedar Provident Fund or in the tier three schemes, and a minimum of five years for those in the personal pension scheme. So does it pay to hold out? I think George addressed this issue. As trustees, we think it is yes. We are enjoined by our fiduciary duty to seek the best interest of our clients. And I believe we have all seen Goffer Damien's legal advice to the Minister of Finance. We think reading that legal advice, it presents a legal wiggle room for investors. Government decision to exempt individuals from the debt exchange program makes this a very feasible option. No investor is special. All investors are to be treated equal. And we believe we can enforce this right using judicial means to get government to improve the offer. We may get a better deal, really, similar to what government will offer to the individual investors if we are patient. We will only accept the debt exchange program if the cost of holding out outweighs the anticipated benefits as I have mentioned. So members should trust that access, working closely with the Chamber of Corporate Trustees will seek their best interest. We have seen crisis come and go. This is the 17th time Ghana is seeking an IMF bailout. In 2014, our most recent IMF deal, if my memory serves me right, the city lost 39% of its value, but soon recovered. 
after the IMF program. So this IMF program will not be different. The only exception is the fact that the foreigner is not carrying our burden this time around. We've been called upon to also share in the burden. And that is going to be painful. But all shall pass. The pension reforms as we have today have shifted the risk and the responsibility for retirement income provisioning to you and I as individuals. We therefore need to take individual responsibility to rebuild our retirement savings for a better future, especially as George mentioned, those retiring in the next 12 years will need to increase their retirement savings to help achieve better outcomes for them when they retire. And you can count on access, your reliable partner to continue to assist you in your quest to improve your retirement savings. Please, there's a lot of misinformation out there. So I encourage you to feel free to call your relationship manager or to call the Access Call Center for the latest information on the decision of the Chamber on the Debt Exchange Program. We are forever grateful to you for your continued trust in Access. Thank you very much for joining this webinar and God bless you. This too shall pass. Thank you very much. Indeed, this too shall pass. Thank you very much, Afriye. And to you um, for attending this webinar, we are really, really grateful for sharing your morning with us. To our panelists, we want to say a very, very big thank you for making time to do your research and sharing these presentations with us. And we've also seen some comments from some of the attendees praising us and giving us some thumbs up there. We're grateful for all of that. Thank you very much. As has been shared in the chat box, the slides will be shared with you including the recordings as well will be shared with all attendees. Thank you so much. We would like to end with uh, a prayer as we started with same. So kindly indulge as we see a short prayer. Dear Lord, we want to say thank you. We give you all the glory for what you have done. We started with you and you have ended well with us. Thank you for the life of everyone on this call, participants and our panelists as well. We thank you so much. Even as we commit every Everything that has been discussed, the future of this nation, the future of all of these schemes, we commit it to you, oh God. Let it be well with us to the glory of your name. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. On that note, we'd like to say this bring us to the end. Thank you so much for joining us. We hope to see you again next when we have our next webinar. God bless you and have a good day. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye.